Yes. Um, so, um, at, uh, firstly, I was wondering when you remember when you first um, came to Europe to facilitate the work that reconnects. Um, like, what was your sort of um, what, what moved you then, and what moved you on this current European tour? Um, like, what, well, what, what yeah. came from the people and? Um, well, you know, when I first came over to Europe uh, with the work, it was exactly 30 years ago. It was 1983, and I landed in Glasgow and began right away offering workshops. And uh, I was very aware of the kind of trauma people were experiencing with the uh, American military presence and the, at the air bases and the uh, flight maneuvers for the training of the pilots were bringing screaming huge sound that would like rip the world apart uh, and were sometimes uh, cracking church steeples uh, with a boom. You know what's he called? It's breaking the sound barrier. Mm. And I remember at that time people were calling Great Britain America's largest aircraft carrier. And it was so moving to me to see how ready people were to uh, speak of their own uh, anguish and uh, distress uh, that they were experiencing. Uh, after all these great wars and everything, to be caught up in the East-West um, military competition and I fell in love with the people, but you always do doing this kind of work. And so this time, here I am, 30 years later, the work has grown, the work has spread, uh, thanks to uh, folks and people at places like the Center for Human Ecology, and uh, there's such a richness coming out of uh, people's experience and people's work together and uh, the campaigns people are doing together and the inquiries that people are making into our relationship to the Industrial Growth Society and to the Earth and where our strength is and what kind of future are we uh, heading toward and seizing the opportunity together to, to vision what we really want and to find the strength. So that's what we've been doing here, mm -hmm. and I'm so glad that uh, people like you and the Center for Human Ecology and the others, what do you call the center now? It's still called the Center yeah. for Human Ecology. Yeah. Still here. Uh, <laughs> uh, are are uh, working along the same lines. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And what do you find in terms of the emotions that people brought to the workshops? Um, have they changed in those 30 years? Um, what, what do, how did you find, how did people respond? Well, to I th what? yeah, I, one difference is that the uh, sense of alarm and uh, over the direction of uh, our culture, our uh, military-industrial complex and the uh, much greater and much closer to the surface. The uh, suffering being caused uh, is much more evident both to humans, more and more people, dispossessed, uh, without the mere basics for human life, as well as what's happening to and the species, extinctions and biodiversity and contamination of water and soil and air and climate change. So all of that compared to the alarm we felt, which was deep too, uh, 30 years ago, were so much more uh, feeling the ground crumbling within us, uh, beneath us rather, well I guess within us too. <laughs> And so I find people uh, readier to act and readier to take risks, don't you? Yeah. I was born 30, 
31 years ago, so... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, um, so what role in, in all this, to address all this crumbling in and out of it, what, what, what's the sort of essence of the, of the work that reconnects in addressing yes. all this? Well, I've grown to have so much uh, trust in it because it helps people uh, connect with their own experience. We do not come in and deliver a lot of information to people and direct them uh, on what they should do. We're not trying to recruit people uh, into a particular campaign. Rather, we invite people in the processes to uh, move through like four experiences or four stations on what we call the spiral of the work, the sequence of the work. And I keep waving my hand because it is it moves in a circular way uh, with starting with uh, a uh, touching into our gratitude to be alive. That's our birthright, to be glad to be, that we're alive. And once we go into that and it's really big, it puts ground under our feet and uh, gives us uh, strength and presence for telling the truth about uh, what we see happening to our world and what we feel happening to our world and know that's happening. Because this is the voice that we most need to hear, is the voice within us. You see, from a system's point of view, what that does is it unblocks the feedback loop. And no system, no culture, civilization, social system can survive without feedback. And if we, it blocks the feedback, which our governments are doing with classifying everything and secrecy and keeping the pe populace unaware and not letting people know what they're doing. Uh, we can't self-correct, but when we unblock the feedback loops, open people's, by first to hear, letting them hear their own voice, then the self-organizing power of an intelligence of life itself in the web of life can begin to act through us. So we don't tell people what to do, but just watch as people uh, rally and experience their energy and intention for the healing of the web of life and move into it. So there's exhilarating. I'm still feeling some exhilaration mm -hmm. uh, after uh, this last workshop and actually it's been seven and a half weeks of workshops that I'm drawing to a close now before going home to the US. And uh, what would be uh, sort of uh, any advice that you would give facilitators in Europe who might want to um, carry forth the work that reconnects and bring it to uh, vast amounts of people? Um, what would be your advice to them? Well, I think my advice to uh, my brother, sister, activists in Britain and Europe who have been touched by the work that reconnects is to uh, let it grow in them, this work, and, and uh, the more I experience it, the more I learn about it, about the process, and the more I learn about the strengths in me and my uh, brother-sister humans, the more I find myself ready to act in defense of life on Earth, the more I sense the solidarity that is between us. So I would encourage people to uh, keep on, get experience in it, keep on experiencing it, and if you don't have a place to go for that, just uh, pick up a book or look at, yeah, there's Coming Back to Life, there's Active Hope, there's the websites that uh, describe the processes and I think to to make a little study action group to meet together uh, every week or every month 
So I'm discussed together a chapter that you will have read about the worldview underlying the work, and then uh, try your hand at facilitating one or more of the processes. I think that is uh, strengthening every step of the way. And um, what um, what do you think? Um, because uh, the CHE uh, has has run courses in transformative education. Um, so, um, what would be your message to members of uh, networks uh, of the CHE network or people who've been working with the CHE? Um, uh, yeah. Transformative educators everywhere. What What's the role of transformative education in that the world most needs well, today? Well, it is extremely transformative education. The approach you take to address and draw out the whole person. The whole person realizes that he or she is in touch with a larger whole of uh, life on earth, of this living planet and that uh, transformative education as I understand the Center for Human Ecology is putting it forward is also uh, inquiry based and helping people find the curiosity and the energy and strength to find out for themselves and it means experiential education It means not just taking what you're handed as a report or a textbook, but getting engaged. And what better time than when life on Earth is uh, facing this uh, crisis point. And then transformative, you can transform into a sense of ability to respond to the crisis, a responsibility linking you to your uh, brother, sister, humans, and other life forms. And uh, where do you see the role of uh, elders in all this? What's, what's the role of, of eldership in um, mentoring well, the I next would, generation? Uh, uh, being quite an elder myself at 84, I find that the best way to uh, feel young and stay young is to uh, care about the planet, hang out with activists, be an activist yourself, and not get warehoused in some uh, retirement community. Uh, this is the time that you're free to uh, get engaged, free to learn. You may not be feeling as spry as I am to run around the world, but you certainly can use whatever imagination and mental powers you have and desires for socializing uh, for learning what's going on and, and being of use and telling the stories and sharing the memories and letting the ancestors speak through you. Uh, for those who are stepping out to risk so much for the sake of a future. And what happens to, to the young um, who grow up without elders or without the voice of elders or not? Oh, not it's happening so much. Yeah, yeah. And I love the moves that people are making here and there to bring uh, children and old people, nursery schools into retirement homes and so forth. Uh, bringing them together, we we all crave that, need that, and will grow. It will fatten our souls. Hmm. Do you have one, any more questions, Luke? Maybe just one final question about um, what do you see as the most urgent task for us to do today in the world? Mm. Well, I'd say that I think the most urgent task uh, facing us now is, is double-sided, is get really interested 
and what's going on because it is fascinating as well as ominous. And open the eyes and open the heart and open the mind to what's going on and look for channels, uh, media that are not uh, corporate owned and controlled so that you can get a good window onto our time. So that's the finding out. And then also uh, the other is speaking, telling the truth about what uh, you see. You go out and you look around, you see the unemployed, you see the homeless on the street, you see kids dropping out of school, you see families dispossessed, you read in the papers, etc. Uh, issues about still, we're still preparing for a war. We're still sailing things like trident submarines out that could obliterate the wor uh, world and throw it into, with even an accidental launch, throw us into a nuclear winter that could end life on Earth. So I think that to me uh, is wake up. Wake up, everybody. Open your eyes to what's going on. It'll feel to your soul and speak out. <laughs> That's a great point to end. Maybe just if there's any final messages to people who maybe would have liked to come but haven't been able to and people that have been interested in the work and yeah. haven't been able to haven't been able to work with you, if there's maybe any, oh. any message that... Yeah, well, uh, it's been wonderful being with the uh, young activists who were here with me at Hardwick this last week, but there are many more. And so, uh, start having a steady action group on your own or, or uh, plug into a network. Now right here, you're at the, at the website of Center for Human Ecology, you can find out where, the, where there are uh, the kinds of workshops and experiential work and transformative work that is connected with the work that reconnects. You can find out. Yeah, you'll Wonderful. love it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Sarah. Wonderful.